terms of time during which you, you stop, you, you close the road. And uh, minimizing, uh, whether you believe it or not, minimizing the amount of time you close the road is one of the main concerns. So they want to plan their work as much as possible. And doing this is one part of their, their task, where they will take their 2D drawings representing the pipes, and it will go inside with, with a measuring tool, with spray paint, and they will measure the position in spray paint, showing the locations of those pipes across it. So that when they come with the excavator, then it, it's better to know where the pipes are than not moving them and keeping a gas tank pipe. Of course, this is good, but it's late You still have to measure a lot of things, and this, this takes a while. It will be much better. If you could take your drawings and display them in the physical world. If this, this would enable the user to, to browse the environment, showing the pipes <coughs> exactly as they are in the physical world. It, helps, it would help users understand their models better. Now, this is not our idea. This is the result. This is the, the, the idea from the Gauss people. And we just improved it and made it more interactive than adding a few features. Several users who saw that said, oh, this is And he wants to make sure he doesn't hit something important, so he uses drawing information. The problem is on the drawing, there are four sections of the same wall, each one representing a section at a different position. Which one is which? Well, we need to know. So basically, what we do here is we take the drawing information and display it exactly in the physical world. That gives us spatial information, extra information that you can't get easily if you just look at the 2D drawing. That shows exactly. Now, if you, the drawing is there exactly at the location it presents, it becomes disappeared because it's hidden by the wall. So we open the wall and show the inside of the building. And then we show the drawing in the context of the model, which in turn is in the context of the building. So it helps understanding the data, which means that it gives more value to the data. It's as simple as that. OK, we did all those works on panoramic images. So this is not augmented reality. This is augmented standards. We're kind of cheating. We did that for accuracy. Now, the problem with that is that the panoramic images has been captured at a fixed position. So you can observe the world from that position. You can just turn it around. It's a bit constraining. And the photo is a moment in time. So as soon as you take the photo, it's no longer valid because it's in the past. So we are augmenting past panoramas, which is a bit worse. But the idea of using panoramas is that since they are at a fixed position, we have a very stable augmentation, of course. And the field of view of a panorama is 360 degrees. So we have features all around the place which we can use to align more. So it's very good. It provides very good accuracy. So we, we wanted to, uh, to do both because augmented reality really is about augmenting present. So we tried to combine both, and we came up with this. We used a panoramic video camera that sends us 75 meg per second of image data that we process using uh, two laptops. So the idea here is we do augmentation on a panoramic video camera. When the camera is on the tripod, it's not moving, so it's stationary. 
And if you want to move somewhere else, you take the camera somewhere else. And during that time, the system will track your camera position so it knows where it is. And when you put your camera back on the ground, you can you can do the augmentation. Here, a short video that shows uh, the tracking, which shows the tracking is very, very stable because we're using a, a panoramic camera. It's only two or three frames per second, though, because uh, it's a lot of data to process. But we just wanted to show here that it's very stable. There's an offset that I can make on the right. But our main purpose here is to show that the tracking was good. Uh, once you do that, then you can position your camera somewhere and do the augmentation. And again, here we're doing a virtual excavation on the wall. It's very steady, it doesn't shake because the camera is stationed. Extremely important. And our challenge is to make sure the opposite actually happens. And we're so glad that so many researchers meet every year.